Good morning. Welcome to the playground. <laughs> it's time. It's time to come out and play. Let's see the bat signal go out. Today is Tuesday. I was thinking it was Wednesday. I seem to be a day ahead every day. Today is Tuesday, December 6th, 2021. <laughs> For any of you who doesn't, you, if you haven't figured out what day of the week it is yet, I can give you that much. I don't know anything else that's going on in the world and I'm not even paying attention this morning. Totally in my own world. Good morning, any 7 How are you? Good morning, John. How are you? Come on in. Come in and play in the playground. <sighs> Good morning. Good morning. Hmm. How are you guys feeling this morning? The energy is very weird for me today. So if, you, if I seem a little off, I'm a little off. Hi, Melanie. Good morning. It's not bad off, I don't think. It's weird off. I'm just kind of shaky and weird today. But it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'm used to it. It's like Ascension Symptoms 101. What do we get today? Oh, we get this. <laughs> Something new. Isn't this fun? <laughs> so, it is what it is. Let's, let's lighten up the energy today. Breathing. Allowing the angels to join us today. We're going to have a play group that is filled with angelic energy. And all of my earth angels are arriving. So, I'm so glad that you're here. I think it's a blessing, isn't it? It's a blessing that that all of us are coming out of the woodwork for each other today. Oh, I just think, um, John, I think it comes from waking up at 3 in the morning. <laughs> 3 in the morning. <laughs> That's all. Hi, Tammy Fisk. Good morning. Just throws you off when you get off schedule. I have a very sensitive body. <laughs> it likes to have a schedule. And if I try to throw it off, it's like, whoa, what's going on? <laughs> Inner turmoil. It's okay. Peaceful today. Good, Jennifer. Me too. It's not a bad thing necessarily. It's just, my body's just saying, hey, you need a little more rest. That's all. <sighs> Everybody just take a big old, take a big old breath. Let's ground our energy. Put your feet down. See your roots down today. Let's just be completely, perfectly rooted today. I find it helps sometimes to just say, tell your body, say ground. There. That's better. That's better. It works every time. Thank you, John. What do you guys want to do today? Where do you want to play? Let's, let's have some fun. Let's bounce around. Let's have some fun today. I feel like there's a lot... Yes, Stefan, I'm well enough today. I'm always well enough. I'll always pull myself out. I'm a little late. It took me a little longer to get myself up and around, but that's okay. So how are you guys today? How are you? How are you feeling? Um, you know, we're coming in and it feels like a super powerful time. And I think that no matter what we do, we think um, our bodies, our, our souls, our spirits are soaring. We're, we're learning that we've got wings. And that's what, when I was getting ready for the show, it was all about the wings today. And stretching those wings out, feeling the wings on your backs, realizing that you're more than you ever thought possible. Is it possible? Is it possible when you sit down and you really think about who you really are? Is it possible that you are actually an angel? Is that possible? Because I know for most of us, we would have thought, okay, crazy stuff, crazy stuff. That's like saying I'm a dragon, saying that I'm a fairy, whatever. Angels were always something that was like fairy tale. And, and to think that we are really super powerful well above us and to think that we might carry that same angelic energy seemed like a um, egotistical wild idea a long time ago really not that long ago for me but to come to the place i was writing about it this morning if you saw my page i've been in writing mode since 3 a.m <laughs> it means there's another big book coming this time this book is going to be a biggie <laughs> i can feel it coming and so um as we as we go into this period we're coming into a very very powerful time for all of us and as we're coming in, we're finding our wings and we want to fly and, and our souls are like so big. They're so expanded and so expansive and they're like, whoa, look at all the things we can do. And the body is still down here in this 3D stuff <laughs> and it's going, wait a minute, what's going on? I can't quite keep up. And it's just one of those days for me. And I want you to know that when you have those days when the body just feels heavy and tired, it's not easy for the body to keep up with all of this expansion. So you just listen to it. You say, okay, I'm going to rest a bit more today. I'm going to be easy with myself. I'm going to take good care of myself. I'll drink a lot of water today. I'll ground my energy. I'll spend some time in nature. I'm going to go hug a few trees. Whatever it takes for you to be um, more in a re relaxed and easy on yourself. Because you really do have wings. 
You really do. You have wings growing out your back. And in some days, all of this transition that we're going through can be heavy and difficult on the body. Hi, Carol Ann. What would an angel want to come into this <laughs> separateness? Because I wrote about it this morning as it was coming through. And it always comes through to me like children's stories. So here is how I see it. Let me tell you guys a story. Thank you, Carol. I want to tell you a story because I'm such a mom. <laughs> let, me, let me pull myself right up. <laughs> my grandmother taught me this. She loved to tell stories. Okay. So I want everybody to make yourselves comfortable. <laughs> make yourselves comfortable. If you want to climb up in my lap, that's okay. We'll just lay here. We'll sit here and we'll relax. I'm in a little rocking chair. Picture me, grandma, sit in a little circle around me. So this is how I see the world, okay? This is how I see the beginning of everyone talks about Adam and Eve, right? We all talk about Adam and Eve. Some of us believe, some of us don't. Some of us think it's far out. Some of us think, yeah, maybe there's a little bit of truth. Some of us think it's all truth. You all have your own filters and that's okay. So this is my filter. So I'm going to explain to you how I see it happening. So sit up, sit back and enjoy story time, okay? So let's just say that there's this beautiful energy that's living in a place where everything is perfect. Everything is perfect. And everywhere this energy looks, there is beauty that has been created. This energy has created it all and thought, oh wow, look at all this beautiful, oh God, so perfect. But after a while, all that perfection started getting a little boring. Started going, well, you know, I'm kind of, I kind of like to experience some other stuff here. Everything's so perfect. Maybe I'd like to try something new. So that energy, you can call God, you can call creation, you can call source, said, you know what, let's, let's try this. Let's, let's break up into a lot of little pieces. I'm going to create all these little pieces <laughs> and, and they're all going to be really cute. They're like little, little dollies walking around. And so the first ones that I create, I'm going to put, and just so that it doesn't, it doesn't shock their systems too much, I'm going to create a perfect garden for them and I'm going to put them in there. And so, so here comes the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve. Adam is created. Eve is created. Adam is very lonely. So, so this source, God, creator says, well, you know what? I can't leave all by himself. He needs a perfect balance. You know, this, this male that I've created, this divine masculine, well, he's really cool. Hi, Gerald. He's really cool, but he just needs somebody to soften him up a little bit. Maybe, you know, have a little more intuitive, you know, just just a little softening agent. So he says, I'm going to create this female. And so then you've got Adam and Eve walking around and they're really cute. They're cutie pies. They don't, you know, look at little children. They don't know that they're naked. They're just having fun. They, I had a little boy that stripped off all of his clothes in Toys R Us one time. I'm like, what are you doing? You're naked in Toys R Us. <laughs> he was like, woohoo, that's that's Adam and Eve. <laughs> Woo we're naked. They loved it. And everything was great. You know, everything that they needed was right there. If they needed food, it grew on the trees. If they needed rest, a hammock popped up in front of them. If they needed anything, if they needed anything, it was there for them. But, but then, you know, the creator is sitting there going, well, you know, it's cute. It's a, it's a fun little creation, but it still hasn't taken me anywhere. It's still very perfect, isn't it? There's nothing really to learn from here. So he starts talking to Adam and Eve, and he's like, you know, I have a mission. I have an idea, and it's going to be very difficult, and it's going to be painful. And, you know, I'm, I couldn't, I don't even know if I can ask you to do this, but I'd love for you to try it. I'd love for you to experience the world outside of the Garden of Eden, just to, you know, like get a taste of what it's like to live in a world of where, you know, there's not perfection, where things can get kind of weird and scary. And... So Adam and Eve, they walk away for a while and they're thinking about it. And, you know, Adam, he's kind of like, nah, I just want to sit here and watch football. <laughs> he's like, I'm enjoying <laughs> where would football come from? I don't know. The squirrels were playing. That just came up. Um, just keep on rolling with it. Try not to <laughs> get too stuck on these parts. So, so he's just sitting there in his easy chair with his remote control in his hand. And he's like, nah, I'm pretty happy right where I am. And Eve's like, but come on, you know, God really wants to give us a challenge. You know, we really need a challenge. This is kind of boring. I really need to kind of stretch my muscles and see what the, what the rest is like outside of the walls. And, <clears throat> and after a while, <clears throat> she talks him into it. She's like, he's like, well, all right, baby, I love you so much. If you really want to... <laughs> I love it when guys call their women baby. <laughs> I do that all the time. Sorry. If you really want to step outside of the walls, we'll try it. We'll go outside the walls. So, brave Adam. 
brave Eve, they, they put on some big leaves. <laughs> they protect themselves. They think that's going to protect them against this big, scary world. They have no idea. They got no idea what's outside of those walls if they thought fig leaves was going to save them. But <laughs> that's what they did, fig leaves. So <clears throat> there's a little meeting going off in a side room because the angels are like, God, what are you doing? Like, what is going to happen to these little cute little Adam and Eves if, if we let them go outside the wall? There's like dinosaurs, there's monsters out there. They're going to get eaten in no time flat. They're way innocent. I mean, look at them. They got fig leaves. <laughs> I think the fig leaves are... And the angels are like, there's no way. Archangel Michael's there and he's like, nah, I got to protect him. There's no way, God, there's no way that I'm going to leave these little ones out there in the world by themselves. So... <clears throat> So the second that they're they're all standing there at the gate, Adam and Eve, they step out and they're like, whoa, everything. All of a sudden, as soon as they step out of the gate, they forget that the Garden of Eden even exists. They forget that they're a part of God. They forget everything. They have com complete and total amnesia. And they start walking out into the world. And guess who follows? Angels. The angels are like, no, I'm not leaving them alone. You're going to have to allow us to be there for them. When they think of us, we won't, we won't say a word to them. But if they call out to us, we have to be allowed to go to them and help them. And God is like, okay, but you can't mess with them. Otherwise, they have to ask. They have to have free will and free choice. That's the only rule in this. They have to have free will and free choice. They have to remember you. They have to ask for help because they have already agreed to go out there without any help. So the angels are like, okay, all right, we agree. And they have. They, they're very good at holding that law. So out we come into the world. <laughs> and we all know the history. It's all scary and people get all weird. They forget who they are. They've completely forgotten who they are. They got it. Adam and Eve had kids that got violent with each other. It started really early. <laughs> you know how siblings are. They just can't handle competition. So <laughs> the world just starts expanding and growing like crazy. And people, the pop they're populating the planet. And they're getting eaten by animals. And they're killing each other off. And they're doing all these wild, crazy things. And after a while, the angels are like, yeah, they just don't remember us. They're not calling on us. You know, why can't they call on us? So here's what I think. And I could go further into the birth of Jesus, too, if you'd like me to. <laughs> but let's stop at the angels, okay? The angels finally said, we got to do something more. They gathered together. And they're like, you know, they're, they're off in some other realm someplace. And they're like, well, we're just, they can't really sense us around them. Around them. They just don't know we're here. They'll never know we're here if we just stay like this. So there's a few brave angels that said, you know what? I agree. I'm going to come in physical form. I'm going to go down there in physical form. I'm going to be born just like everybody else. And I'm going to go in physical form. And I'm going to remind them of who they are. And I may not remember. I may not remember. We have to remember that the birthing process is, is like the total amnesia tunnel. <laughs> we come through that tunnel, forget everything. So those angels, those angelic beings came through the birth canal and they they forgot who they were, but there was one thing different about them than the other humans. They carried an energy. There's an energy about them that when one angel comes near another angel, they wake each other up. They go, ding. And all over the world, they continued to come in. <clears throat> and after, after all this time, they still continue to come into physical form. And they carry a beautiful energy into the world with them. And when they walk through the world, people are awakened just by the energy that passes by them. And they remember that there are angels all around them, that there always has been angels. It wakes them up to the truth of who they are. So those few brave angels, which is all of you, came into the world through that birth can canal. You forgot who you were through the birth canal, and yet you still carry an, an angelic energy about you that's different than other humans. And wherever you go, and whatever you do, and whatever you say, whatever you feel, that energy is always going to be there. Sometimes it makes a bit of a dive, but it's always there. It's always there. It's always there. And no matter how much hardship you've ever gone through, and if you think about the fact that when you were little children, people probably treated you really poorly. Most of us, I think probably all earth angels came through a very, very difficult childhood, have gone through a lot of trauma. And even if we didn't go through a very difficult childhood, we um, may have perceived it as such. We may have also had a lot of illness. We may have had a lot of things to hold us back. We may have been born for a very short time. Many earth angels are born. They, they come in and they go right back out. So as you're looking around you, at other humans that are around you. Can you take the time to feel their energy? Can you take the time to say, oh, that one's different? 
If you pay attention, you will notice the earth angels. You'll see they're not hidden. They're, they're hidden right in plain sight. They're all around us. That moment when your car breaks down and somebody walks, in, walks down to you and says, I think I can help you out. That moment when you're really, really sad or you're hurting or you need a couple bucks or whatever it is, whatever's going on. Even when you were a child, you had that teacher that saw in you something that nobody else saw or that grandmother. I had a grandmother who was an earth angel for sure. You'll know them by their energy. They're here. You're here. You're here to do work, beautiful work. So don't doubt yourself anymore. That's my story, Carol. That's my story. <laughs> I hope you like my stories. <laughs> Jennifer, I'm so glad. <laughs> so here, what are we at? 10.03. We still got some time. That was late today. That was a quick story time. <sighs> so can you look at yourself in the mirror today? Can you look at yourself in the mirror? Can you look in your eyes and say, where are you? Where are you? Can you realize that when you call on Archangel Michael, when you call on Jesus, when you call on any of the Ascended Masters, when you call on any of these beautiful angels, any, 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 any powerful beings, that when you call, they come because you're an angel, because you have a, a special signal that you put out whether you like it or not, <laughs> you put off a special signal. And when you do, they know they can channel through you. They know they can come through, through you to heal the world. They know they can come through you to heal others. So they're like, oh, she's awake. Okay, she's awake. She's calling. She's putting up the bat signal. <laughs> Just like Steve. Steve's an angel, truly. Was an earth angel walking the planet, and now he's there. He's there, always working with me one-on-one. -on -one. How many of us have that, that teamwork, that partnership? Carol, I know you're one where you've got someone, could be a grandparent, or we all have them. We have our spirit guides. We have these angels around us who are powerful beings who allow us to feel their energy, to remember. I was an earth angel from the moment I was born, the first breath I took. I didn't know it until Steve died. Because when he, when he passed, within just a day or two, I felt his energy. And he allowed me to feel what it's like to be a true angel he allowed me he gave me that energy and it sounds crazy and yet I know it's true he came in and said okay let me let me wake you up he was my wake-up call this is what we feel like this is what you feel like feel it stop for a second let the angelic energy is starting to flow he was my wake-up call have you had your wake-up call yet because if you haven't I hope I can be your wake-up call wake up Wake up, you're so much more than this physical body. You're so much more. Look in your eyes and say, Oh, there you are, I see you. You're alive, you've always been alive. You were here when Adam and Eve were first stepping out of the garden. You stepped out with them. You had their back. Sometimes you came in animal form. Sometimes you were a, a puppy, right when, right when someone needed that puppy. Sometimes you were a deer when someone needed food. Isn't that cool to think that you came into the earth to give your life, to feed, to save others? We all think of it so cruel and so sad that animals die like that. Those animals signed on for that. Just be thankful. They're higher souls, higher beings coming in. Mm, so much. Jennifer, I'm so glad that you're connecting with other earth angels here. John, we are earth angels, and we have so much to give and share. I love being an angel, so do I. And I love the fact that you are one of the people that helped me to realize that, that I've always walked and wondered, what am I? Who am I? So maybe if you're still wondering, what are you? Who are you? And why people have always treated you so differently, and why you've always been on the outside looking in, maybe it's because you're not fully human maybe it's because you carry the energy of the angel and they are very many people are very very put off by that and as you make that transition from um, I'm like everybody else to wait a minute I don't think I'm like everybody else wait a minute I'm so much more then they're really freaked out by it <laughs> it's just it sounded funny but it's true they really are they're like wait a minute that you're not the same person I used to know and they still try to see you the way they used to know you 
Hi, Umi. I see you. I'm still, I'm popping up. I'm seeing faces that I didn't say hi to. Hi, Laura. Hi, Sally. Good morning. Janet, good morning. Gerald, I think I said good morning to you. Hope, good morning. I think I got you all. If I didn't, oh, Erica, good morning. <laughs> I still miss some. Stefan, good morning. Tammy, I think I got everybody else. No one. So nice to see you guys. Thank you for joining me. I hope you caught story time. I think we'll start doing that every day. It helps me to tell stories because when I start telling stories, it, it awakens the book that's trying to write itself inside of me. So I appreciate you guys listening to my stories. We have to be... This morning, something really powerful came through to me. I've always wondered, how many of you wonder what your purpose is in life? I think I've got mine figured out. It's 2021 and they finally showed me. <laughs> My purpose, see if I can get this right, my purpose is to show others how to create through the inner child, through play, through, through their childlike wonder. That's the best way to remind you that you still have an inner child and that we are here to create. You know what I was looking at yesterday? <laughs> you know how I always talk about I created the platypus? You know what? I think I created the sloth too. I was looking at somebody posted pictures of the baby of a baby sloth yesterday. I was like, oh yeah, that's mine. <laughs> oh yeah, it's got to be mine. <laughs> Anytime you see an animal that's really freaky looking and really really cute as a baby, that's me. It's got to be. <laughs> I can see myself sitting there just working at it, working at it, and giving it the funniest little claw hands, and making it move really slow, <laughs> really strong, and really slow. <laughs> so slow that moss grows on it and yet when it climbs the tree it can swing it can swing it's so strong and it goes so slow and it's got the funny eyes you ever looked closely at a sloth their eyes are so funny and they always smile if you look at a sloth they are always smiling they're the most they're awesome and i know i did that so i claim that one too so what do you want to claim today can we go into the creative workshop today together it's 10 10 i love 10 10 i'm quite the child this morning my little girl is alive and well and filled with joy and ready to share that out in happy story times and imagination and creativity. And so where is yours? If it's my job to wake up those happy little children and people so that we can start creating a world that has no more lower vibrational energy. There's no more hate or fear. Nothing that comes from fear. It all comes through the lens of love. So today... I would like you to create a pair of glasses for yourself. They can be as funny looking as you like. I have some funny looking ones. They might be rose colored. You might even just make one so your other eye looks normal. But I'd like you to imagine for a few minutes a pair of the funniest looking glasses. And I want you to put those glasses on your face. I want you to be, I want you to see yourself as that little girl, a little boy. And you put on, do you remember those glasses I just saw that had the eyeballs on springs? They're like, boing, John, I need your boing. They had the eyeballs that just boing. Or my brother used to have some that they were glasses, but they had fake eye on them. So when you put them on, it looked like you real eyes, except it wasn't. And I used to laugh so hard at those. So what are the funniest glasses you can find? Put them on your face today. I want you to look in the mirror when you do that. Pretend. This is all pretend. You got this beautiful mirror. I love fairy tale land. So pretend it's a mirror like in Snow White. It's like a huge mirror that, that the Wicked Witch looks into. Mirror, mirror on the wall. <laughs> Who's the craziest of them all? Who's going to be the craziest today? Who's going to put on the craziest glasses? Sorry, my tongue got stuck. Did you hear that? That was funny. Who's going to put on the craziest glasses today? <clears throat> I bet it'll be me. I'm imagining some pretty wild glasses right now. And if you get a chance today and you could take maybe color a picture of your glasses, I would love for you to post them under this or, or on my homepage. That'd be great. I'd love to see your glasses. And then those glasses are special glasses. They're going to take us into our meditation this morning. They're going to help you to see the world through a different lens. So go ahead and get your feet planted. 
We're going to go into meditation, into happy time together for a few minutes. We're going to be like children today. So today, I want you to dig deeply within yourself. I want you to find that beautiful inner child. You all have them. Some little girls, little boys, little blondie curlies on their heads, beautiful blue eyes. Do you know that when my son, I just thought about this, my son, the Ty, the, he's what, 23 now, when he was a baby, God, I looked at him and I was like, you are an angel. There's no other way that you've got to be an angel. And you're so, oh gosh, he was so beautiful. He had the bluest blue eyes and these blonde curlies all over his head. And he hated to have his hair cut. Oh my gosh, it would take four people. It was like you were chopping his head off. He could not stand to have his hair cut. But the, so typically I would take, take him into a hairdresser or eventually I just started doing it myself because it was, he was terrorized and all of the hairdressers were terrorized by him. <laughs> so nobody would do it. They were afraid they were going to hurt him. So you would take clippers and you would shave his head. You'd cut his hair back really short because that would last longer. If you gave him a haircut that was, you know, it, you had to do it again soon and it, he would scream again. So I would make it really short. And when you would make his hair really short, there's a, there's a moral, there's an ending to the story. He had, and I need him to cut his hair. He's got his hair long now, and I, I really would love to cut his hair short again while he's asleep. So that, <laughs> because on his head was a perfect halo. It went all the way around his head. He had a golden circle all the way around his head. Just to show me, I wonder if Earth Angels actually have things like that. What have you got about you that's really... I notice the eyes often are different. I have gold flecks in my eyes. If you looked closely, they're green, kind of. They change colors. They, they're lighter sometimes. And then sometimes they are... Um, Steve used to say, I can't figure out what color your eyes are. And I'd say, I, don't, I always thought they were green. And he's like, no, they're not. Because sometimes they're green and sometimes they're almost golden. And they do. They have golden flecks if the sun shines on them. What do you got going that makes you know that you're like, wait, I'm different? <laughs> Ty has a Ty has a halo. I got gold flecks. <laughs> what do you got? What do you got that shows you? It may be just, well, I hate the word just. It may be, it's always the energy that you're carrying. But I feel like maybe each one of us has something. Some kind of little birthmark, something that, that is there to remind us that we are earth angels. Think about that. I don't even know why I thought about that, but I just did. So I said it out loud because that's what I do. <laughs> just butt comes falling out of my face. All right. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> let's get serious now. Here we go. Your feet are down. Your roots are going to go deeply, deeply into the earth. Let yourself just sprout into the earth today. The energy's building. The angels are coming in. They're coming in in droves. I can see them just flying in. It's <clears throat> a lot of them are the little bitty. For whatever reason, when I imagine angels, when we're coming into playtime, I see little bitty cherub angels. I see the little cutie pies that just have a little diaper on. <laughs> They're pudgy, pudgy little cutie pies, just like we are. And so I want you to find your pudgy little cutie pie that's inside of you. <laughs> I was a pudgy little cutie pie too. She's still there, little pudgy self cutie. Little cutie. <laughs> I think of Abby when she was little. She was such a little pudgy thing. So all of my babies were pudgies. <laughs> little pudgy pudgies. <laughs> I love babies. So you're all little babies today. Little cuties. Be the cutest little person you can be. And I want you to put those funny little glasses on your pudgy little face. <laughs> I feel like I could just squeeze your little cheeks right now. I just want to snuggle your little fat neck. <laughs> Sorry, I love babies. And so, as we come in together, all of us little pudgies, we're making a little circle. Now, in this circle, there is a sandbox. It is a great sandbox. Let me tell you something. The sand comes in every color of the rainbow. And, it, and it's the kind of sand that you can pick up and squeeze and mold. It doesn't just fall through your hands. You can squeeze it and build with it. And I would love for you, through those beautiful, cute little glasses you got, I want you to see the world differently. This sandbox is the whole world in front of you. It's all your creation. You are the creator. And I would love for you, there's little toys in there, and there's little pieces and parts of animals and whatever you'd like to build. If you want to build a beautiful bridge, if you want to build trees out of rainbow colors, if you want to build animals, create your own new animals, polar bears with wings, or 
How about a polar bear with a big horn coming out the center of his forehead? <laughs> That'd be fun. What would you like to build? Think about all the parts of different animals. You got butterfly wings. And you got duck bills. And you got giraffe necks. And you got kitten whiskers. And you got a lion tail. And you got leopard spots. And you got zebra stripes. And horse necks. Alligator tails. Maybe some alligator other parts too, because alligators are just cool like that. How about some dolphin parts? A dolphin nose? What would you like? What would you like to have on your creation? I want you to go into that. I want you to let your little child come out today. Let them fully come out. Don't hold them inside. They can dance a little bit. They can play. Whatever they want to do. They can bounce around the playground like they're bouncy balls. Whatever you like to do is what you get to do this morning in this playgroup. Whatever you like to create. See the world differently. Everything's shifting. The sky has changed colors. It's a beautiful yellow-orange. There are... There's a pond here in the playground. And if you go look at it, I see these cats swimming and they have great big round heads and a big smile on their face and great big eyeballs under the water. And they're just swimming like the backstroke underwater. <laughs> and when you look down at them, they look up and smile. And there's a few dogs doing the same thing. Can you see them? Like a small golden retriever, except it's swimming under the water with big eyes. His tongue's hanging out because he's loving it. You know how dogs are when they're in the car and the wind's blowing at them? I see swimming, his tongue's hanging out. <laughs> what else can we see while we're here at the playground? My imagination never ends. Let's see what we got. What do we got? I'm looking to see if you guys are coming up with stuff. I can look too far up. Hi, Linda. Playing chase. Okay, want to play play a little chase? Polar unicorn. Excellent, Jennifer. Adorable babies, angels, yes. We're so cute when we do this. Hi, Laura. Playing chase. So we're playing chase. <laughs> she wants to play chase. Anybody want to play freeze tag with Laura? She's chasing you around. When she touches you, you get to go chase her. And you can make a whole big game out of it. You can hide. I love to play chase and hide and seek. Hide and seek was always one of my favorite games. Freeze tag. Oh, I know one that's really, really fun. Who wants to join me in it? So, it's even more magical today. So, when I come over and touch you, you're going to become any kind of statue you'd like to be. And you don't have to just pretend to be the statue. In this, in this meditation time, you get to actually become whatever it is that you, you're thinking of right now. So, I'm going to touch you and I want you to envision yourself becoming something. Imagine me coming over and touching you on the head and you transform into anything. What would you transform into? I want to be a phoenix with rainbow feathers and then I want to I want to jump and I want to fly into the sky and I want to circle the world and I want to stop and visit all of my friends each one of you I'm coming to see you right now imagine that imagine being able to fly across the sky to wherever we want to go nothing stops us that's the world I want to live in You became a, a Medusa, Umi. That's very cool. There you go, the snakes. How about a happy Medusa? She's got dancing snakes coming out of her head. <laughs> did you love that game as a kid, Jennifer, becoming a statue? And then what we usually did was one of us, the one in the lead, would be the buyer. And we'd go through all the statues. And we would go over and touch each statue. And as we touched the statue, it would come alive and do some kind of a show. And then we would, after we touched every statue and let them do their show, we would choose which one we wanted to purchase. And we would buy that one. And once we bought that one, that one became the leader and got to touch everybody and make them statues. It's so much fun being a kid. Why do we want to grow up? Why do we want to let go of play? 
Play is what creates universes. That's the truth. C play creates, look around you at how funny things are. Look around you at the beautiful colors. There are planets out there that you would not believe, <laughs> that you've been to before, that you created the most amazing things, the most amazing animals. Look in the sea alone here. Who created the octopus? Imagine creating an octopus. An animal that's all kind of funny and blobbery, and it's got funny eyes, and it's got eight legs, and every leg has suction cups all over it. It has to be created by one of us. There's no doubt that one of you created that octopus. I know it. So what do you want to create now? That's what the angels are asking us. What would you like to create? The earth is wide open. It's waiting for us. It's your huge playground. That's why you're here to play, to create. Imagine. Can you imagine that that's why you're here? Can you let go of all of these preconceived notions? All of these things that people have been telling you all along that are such baloney. <laughs> it's baloney. Let's take all that baloney today and hold it up. Say, okay, these are all the things that I've been taught that are total and complete nonsense. <laughs> They've been telling me I'm limited. They've been telling me what I can't be. They've been telling me what I can't do. All my life, people have been telling me what I can't do. Guess what? I'm taking it all out from the inside of me. I'm lifting it up right now. Do this with me. Pick it right up. And as you pick it up, the angels are taking it away. They're like, thank you. <laughs> they're taking it away. And as they take it away, they're like, blah, 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 and they're creating something new out of it. And then they're giving it back to you. And you're like, oh, look at a brand new creation. This is me. Boop. Putting it back inside. Fill up that big empty space with something brand new that the angels just created for you. It's like origami. Angel origami. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you boop. <laughs> your, new, your new toy for the day is angel origami. I should write a book about that. I really should. See what you guys do for me? Carol Ann is a blowfish with feathers. That's amazing. I love the blowfish. That's always been one of my favorite creatures on the planet. It gets scared and it goes boop. boop. <laughs> it, it, it expands just like us. <clears throat> Crystal white owl human. Ooh, yeah, I can see it now. Wow, that's cool, Jennifer. Bouncing pig can't keep up. <laughs> can't keep still. Yeah, well, of course the bouncing... Just let that bouncing pig just bounce all over the place. We all love bouncing pigs, John. It's okay. <clears throat> you guys, I hope that you're having fun, and I hope that you don't quit when I walk away from you in the morning. we got about five minutes. Please remember, please remember, remember that this is your job. Your job is not to grow up, to go to college, to be <clears throat> have 2.5 kids, and, and to work and work and work and work and trudge through life until... You get old enough to where you can't work anymore and then hopefully you've got enough set aside so that you can not work for a while and maybe enjoy life. Your job is to be alive right here, right now, in this moment. Be so alive, so alive in every moment that your soul just expands so big that it can't stay within your body and it just bloop like a blowfish pops right out and creates this beautiful bubble around you. And you're floating around in this bubble, and it's like, oh gosh, I love this bubble. This bubble's awesome, and I can pull anybody into my bubble that I want. And if I don't want them there, I can make them bounce off my bubble. It's my bubble of protection. It's my beautiful bubble of healing. And I get to sit in there. I call the angels in. Come on in, angel. I need you in here right now. I need, a, I need an angel in my bubble. Come on in. Ah, I see another angel. Come on into my bubble. You just have a whole bunch of giggling baby angels floating around with you all day as you create your life, as we recreate, as we recreate this planet filled with love, filled with the most amazing magical creatures ever. Wouldn't that be fun? Isn't that fun? That's our game. That is who we are. Believe it. Just believe. It's all about your belief. So put on those funny glasses because they help you to believe better. <laughs> they just shut out the rest of it and they let you just see all the beauty and magic that you're capable of creating. Be that mystical creature today. That everything you touch turns to gold. Everything you touch turns to magic. Just keep touching things. Keep imagining things. <sighs> nice. So I want you now to see yourself in that big bubble. Okay? I want you to pull yourself, that beautiful little cherub baby self, back into your safe little bubble. You're kind of tired. You need a rest. You've been creating the most beautiful things. I see them all around the playground. They're amazing. Thank you so much for joining me at the playground. 
and let that little little cutesy pie little chubby self come back in for a rest. And take a big breath, pull them into your bubble. Ah, nice. And they're ready for a nap. See yourself giving them a little cookie, a little cup of milk, <laughs> whatever whatever they like the most. A little blankie, a little stuffed flying piggy, whatever. <laughs> whatever you'd like to give them. Tell them that it's okay for them to lay down and rest. Be still for a little while, and once they've rested, they'll get back at it again. Because those little cuties, they are just full of magic and wonder. And so much fun to keep around and keep active. Don't, don't forget them. Don't forget that you've got this inside of you. So I'm asking that all around you, the angels are surrounding your bubble today. That they're wrapping you up safe and sound. That your, your higher self, your, your true self is safe, perfectly protected perfectly protected at all times. That your body, your physical self, your home, your land, your cars, your children, your pets, everything is completely perfectly protected today, wrapped up in safety. How do you feel about that? Be safe. Know you're safe. That's a better way. Know you're safe. Keep your vibration high. That's the most amazing protection you can wrap around yourself. There's no mask that can do that any better, I promise. It's the protection of the angels. It's that protection of your belief that they are always there protecting you, guiding you, taking care of you. I love you, Jennifer. <laughs> I'm glad you're receiving today. Thank you for receiving. <laughs> you got it, Umi. Always your friend. Always. You guys, please enjoy your day. What did... Oh, Caroline, I saw a flying pig yesterday and smiled and thought... <laughs> Whenever... There you go. That's the reason for it. Whenever you see a flying pig, think of me. Steve, I, I often think of Steve when I see flying pigs because for whatever reason, I got completely obsessed with flying pigs when Steve and I found each other. I think it was because I never, somewhere inside of me, I just, I was like, this has to be the most amazing miracle to have actually found this one human being on the planet right when I needed him. So I said, when pigs fly. <laughs> and I realized at that, it was like, yeah, that means miracles happen. I do believe pigs can fly, and I do believe in miracles, and I do believe that when we're meant to, to meet people, we will meet them, and that we will expand and grow together, and that this beautiful tribe is all coming together in the most beautiful way. So I'm grateful to all of you for joining my tribe, for being here today, and every other day, and for sharing out. I am so grateful to you. I will see you again tomorrow morning. I have at 10.30 already. It's been fast and fun. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Thank you for all the love. I love you guys right back. Sending you love. Who said that, Jennifer? You're so welcome. You're so welcome, Melanie. You're so welcome, John. You guys, thank you. Thank you for supporting one another. John, much love and support to you today and your loss. For all of you that are struggling today, sending you extra love. Cheryl Ann, you're so welcome. Have a great day. We'll talk to you guys soon. You're welcome, Laura. <laughs> I always miss you guys. I'm trying not to, but i got to sign off. I love you. I'll see you soon. Bye.